third time on this mission. And below the fairing, we have the second stage. Now that's that shorter white stage above the black inner stage that houses our Merlin vacuum engine. After the first and second stages separate about two and a half minutes into the flight, the second stage will ignite its single Merlin vacuum engine to carry the payload to its desired orbit. And last but not least, we have the first stage, also referred to as the booster. This portion of the rocket makes up over 60% of the entire length of the Falcon 9 vehicle. Now, as the name of the vehicle suggests, Falcon 9, attached to the bottom of the first stage are nine Merlin M1D engines that accelerate the vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere and into various orbits in space. The dark sit that you see around the lower part of the first stage are remnants from its previous launches. For this particular booster, it has experience supporting both Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. It supported Cosmos Sky Med and a Starlink mission, as well as supporting STP-2 and Arabsat 6A as a Falcon Heavy side booster. Now what you can see on your screen there is our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. It's currently using its four thrusters to maintain position in the Atlantic Ocean. And the first stage will be, once it separates from the second stage, we will be attempting to recover the first stage for a fifth time on our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. We've got a great view there too. Now you can see on your screen, there are those clamp arms just below the fairing opening up. Those clamp arms are attached to the transporter erector, that structure next to the vehicle. And it looks like the clamp arms have completed opening up, so we should see the transporter erector to start to move. And there you can see it on your screen. It's slow and slight, but the transporter erector is now moving away from the vehicle just slightly. And at liftoff, it will move even further away to clear the way as Falcon 9 lifts off. And there you can see it. <laughs> Pretty cool close-up view of that transport erector retracting back. Now we're coming up on prop load completion. On the Stage one, locks load complete. And great timing. We got that call out that locks load is complete on the first stage. That concludes prop load for first stage, second stage will be wrapping up around the T minus two minute mark. And we always try to load the locks as close to T zero as possible. That allows us to keep the liquid oxygen as cold as possible, as dense as possible, so that we can load as much of it as possible into the vehicles. Again, first stage locks load has already concluded. We're coming up here in about 15 seconds or so on second stage locks load complete. Once we finish prop loading, we have the locks line on the transport erector. We will start to clear out that line. So you'll see a lot more of those white clouds because we'll be venting out the liquid oxygen line once we finish prop load. Stage two, locks load complete. And good calls. Prop load is now complete on Falcon 9. And there you can see on your screen the venting of that liquid oxygen line on the transport erector and also a great view of pad 39A. You can see the fixed service structure uh, and that's used where uh, yes, on, close that's where the, the crewed astronauts uh, will make their way up that fixed service structure and across the crew arm that you can see there when we fly crew. We're coming up on the T minus one minute mark. At that time, the flight computers will take over the launch countdown. We should hear that call out here in a few seconds. Falcon is in startup. There it is, Falcon 9 is now in startup. We are just waiting the final call from the launch director. Starlink 418, go for launch. 
And great news, all systems are go for launch. So let's watch as Falcon 9 takes our 53 Starlink satellites into space. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Full power. And lift off. Vehicle pitching down range. Nominal first stage chamber pressures. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from launch complex 39A, carrying our 53 Starlink satellites into space. Now, moments ago, we did throttle down the engines on the first stage, and this is in preparation for Max Q. Max Q is nominal. Max Q is the maximum dynamic pressure that the vehicle sees on ascent. Falcon 9 is supersonic. Great callouts. Max Q should be coming up here in about 10 seconds or so. Max Q. And there's that call out. We just passed through Max Q. Now with that, we have a few events happening back to back very quickly, one after another. That'll be Miko, or main engine cutoff, stage separation, SES-1, or second stage engine startup one, and then fairing deploy. Miko is where all nine of those engines that you could see lit up on your screen, that is where those engines will shut down, and that helps slow the vehicle down in preparation for the next event, which will be stage separation. That's where the first and second stage separates from each other. First stage will start to make its way back home here on Earth, while the second stage continues on its journey, taking the Starlink satellites with it, uh, with SES-1, or second stage engine startup one, and that's where we will light up that single Merlin engine on the second stage, and that second stage will then propel the Starlink satellites to its targeted drop-off orbit. Main engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back start up. Bearing separation confirmed. Great views of all four of those events. We had Miko main engine cutoff, which we were able to see with the tracking camera. We had stage separation. On your left-hand screen, you can see a view from the first stage. On your right-hand screen is the view of the Both MVAC. vehicles are following nominal trajectories. Great call-outs, nominal trajectories so far. On your right-hand screen is a view of the MVAC engine on the second stage, and you can see that is lit up. And we also got a great view of fairing deploy. And with those fairing halves having deployed, they are now going to make their way back to Earth. And the second stage will now continue its journey to take its Starlink satellites to its targeted drop-off orbit. And some awesome views here on your screen with the Earth in the background. signal Bermuda. Now, while second, second stage proceeds towards its targeted drop-off orbit, the first stage will be making its way back to Earth. And to do so, it will execute two burns. 
Now the first burn is called the entry burn, and that is where three of those nine M1D engines reignite. That helps slow the vehicle down as it enters back into the Earth's atmosphere. Then the second burn is called the landing burn. It's the final burn of the first stage. It's just the single center E9 engine. And that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to touch down. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. In order to touch down on our landing zone. And again, today, it is a shortfall of Gravitas, our drone ship that is nearly the size of a football field. And it's currently located off the coast of South Carolina in the Atlantic Ocean. Now to aid in recovery, Falcon 9 is equipped with some pretty awesome tools to help it land. It has four landing legs stowed at the base of the vehicle that deploy right before landing. It also has four hypersonic grid fins, and you can see that on your left-hand screen. You can see two of the four. Um, these grid fins are located near the top of the first stage, and they help to steer the vehicle as it makes its way back to its landing zone. And you can also see some white puffs on the first stage. There goes one. Um, those are nitrogen bursts. Those are used for attitude control as the vehicle is guiding its way back down to Earth. We are just about 15 seconds or so away from the entry burn beginning on the first stage. Stage two is still looking good. Stage one entry burn startup. Stage one FTS is saved. And we heard that call out, and you can visually see on your screen those engines lighting back up on the first stage. This entry burn will last about 20 seconds long. And it's just three of those nine. Stage one entry burn shut down. Three of those nine engines, and heard that call out that the entry burn has concluded, and you can, fit, you can visually see that the engines have shut down. Both vehicles continue to follow nominal trajectories. Now there will be a second burn for the first stage. That is the landing burn. Um, but as the vehicle is coasting right now, the atmosphere scrubs most of the velocity on the first stage. So we just need that single one engine burn right before touchdown. Uh, each one of these M1D engines have about 190,000 pounds of thrust. That's enough to slow the vehicle down rapidly uh, to make that touchdown landing. Now we are coming Stage up. one transonic. We are coming up on that landing burn in just under 30 seconds. And a great view of first stage here making its way towards our, our drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. Stage one landing burn. There you can see the landing burn has begun on the first stage. The landing legs Terminal will deploy guidance. here shortly. Let's see if Falcon 9 can touch down. Stage one landing leg deploy. Incredible view there. As you can see on your screen, Falcon 9 has touched down on our drone ship. A Stage short, one landing confirmed. A shortfall of Gravitas. Now this marks the 121st overall recovery of a Falcon booster. And what a great view we have there on our screen. And we are coming up on Seco 1 here. Back cut off. Expected loss of signal. Cape. And we have a nominal orbit insertion. And great news. We heard those call outs. We did lose the live view of second stage, but that was expected. But with confirmation of a successful second 
engine cutoff and a good orbit, we will be ending our webcast for today. We will confirm deployment of our Starlink satellites via SpaceX's social channels, but we'll also leave the mission audio live on our YouTube channel if you'd like to follow along through payload deploy. Thank you to the Federal Aviation Administration, our current Starlink customers, and of course, all of you, our viewers, for tuning in. Hope you all enjoy the rest of your week, and we will see you again very soon.